people, Zarth Thwomp here, and welcome to episode 64 of the Grace Attorney 2 Resolve. Last time, we started the first trial portion of the fifth and final case of this game. Strongheart is is running the, ju is the judge, and we are basically proving that Gregson was on the Groose, the same seed ship that Susana's father, as well as Judge Jigoku were on, and we are basically going to be going into detail with that. I'm suggesting that just one day before the inspector's body was discovered, there's a distinct possibility he wasn't even in the country. Order, order! This document is for passage to France. It does appear to have been officially authorized. The day before the SS crews arrived at Dover, it docked on the northern coast of France for a night. According to my father, who was on board, at the port of Dunkirk, Dunkirk, France. What could possibly have taken the victim there? <laughs> I'm impressed for you to see Naruto. I certainly didn't expect you to get your hands on that passport. What? You mean you knew about this? The prosecution strategy for the trial has been laid down by the Crown Prosecutor's Office. On the day before the incident, the victim was investigating contraband dealings at a London club. That's the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigation and the line the prosecution has been asked to follow. But personally, I don't agree. I think the prosecution's off prosecutor's office is trying to hide something. What? And now that you've expertly disproven their assertion, I intend to reveal what I believe that's something to be. What are you playing at, Prosecutor Soki? A courtroom is a forum for the truth, my lord. Which is why it's my duty to present all the facts without exception. Let me guess. That was your intention from the outset, wasn't it? The reason Inspector Grayson secretly made his way to the scene ship docked in France on the day in question was to carry out a mission for the Reaper. The, the Reaper? Order, order! What on earth are you saying, Council? The prosecution made an assertion in court yesterday. Inspector Grayson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine, by the Reaper's hand. But in reality, the truth is the opposite of that. What? Inspector Gregson wasn't investigating the Reaper at all. He was, in fact, acting for the Reaper. So, you're saying that the mission he was undertaking was, obviously, an assassination. Rock Van Zeke's never carried out any of the actual killings. Whenever the Reaper's victims lost their lives, he always had a cast iron alibi. Which tells us that he must have had an accomplice. And you claim that was Inspector Gregson. What? What the hell do you think you're saying, eh? My boss would never have done nothing like that. He would accept bribes, but that is all. And that's mostly was and that was mostly because he because he was strong on by Iris. And yet, when you consider all the facts, it all makes perfect sense. No, it it can't be. We also arrived at the same conclusion, didn't we? That Inspector Gregson was operating as the Reaper. Even so, there's no way that the person giving him his orders was Lord Van Zeeks. No, the true Reaper is somebody else. Brock Van Zeeks is not the Reaper. A predictable response from somebody who's advocating for the man. And even if the truth that Gregson was operating as an agent of the Reaper, the suggestion that he went aboard the SS Groose on an assassination mission doesn't follow at all. Oh, you have some solid reason for doubting the assertion, do you, Council? Absolutely. It's very simple. On the day in question, nobody was killed aboard that steamship. Hmm. Professor Mikadoba and Judge Yigoku were on that very ship. If somebody had been assassinated, I'm certain we would have heard about it. Heh. <laughs> What's so funny? You're right, of course. No suspicious deaths were reported on board the ship. But I think perhaps you've missed the point. That's precisely why Inspector Gregson himself lost his life. What? Gregson did board the SS Cruise that night with the intention of dispatching his mark. 
but his mission ended in failure. Failure? It seems that the defense hasn't yet grasped a very important detail here. What are you talking about? What detail? That Gregson is a wuss. I mean, he's bullied by a 10-year-old girl. How would he expect to kill someone who's defending their life when he can't even fight against a little girl who controls his salary and his life and his dignity? Inspector Dino Lestray. Eh? What? The victim's notebook that you read an excerpt from earlier. That doesn't contain details of secret investigations at all. It describes 10 years of assassination plots to be carried out by the Reaper of the Bailey. You're lying! Even if all them blood just what got taken out at it coming. The boss weren't the Reaper. Poor Gina. There's no question that Tobias Grayson was heavily involved in the Reaper's activities. You may just be an apprentice, but if you've spent any time in Scotland Yard, you must have heard rumors. I ain't heard nothing, and what I and I don't believe a word of it. And then does so again as a representative as a representative of Scotland Yard. Consider it your chance to defend your boss. I I don't. I concur. I concur. The witness will give a new formal testimony. Miss Lestrade, you will tell the court everything you know about Inspector Gregson's secret little notebook. The Reaper's Notebook. Yeah, this notebook does have a lot of stuff about what the Reaper got up to these past 10 years. Name of victims, dates, and places and stuff. And the last entry then, there was the 31st of October. It said Groose for the place of that on that date, and then the name of the mark. There was a note about him being a criminal what got away from the Reaper in court 10 years ago or something. But honest, the boss can't do none of it. He was, he was just investigating the Reaper, that's all. Keep personal opinions out of your testimony, witness. We require only established facts here. This must be so hard for her. You can't deny it now, surely, Rianisuke Naruto. What can I deny? The notebook contained the name of the final mark and the location where the assassination would take place. That's information that the victim could only have known if he was working with the Reaper. Ah! So, who was this final mark? Go ahead, Inspector Lestrade. Read the name for the court. The name that's written alongside the entry that mentions the Groose on 31st of October. Eh? Oh, um... How do you read this, then? Reading still not her strong suit. That ain't the problem, right, Odo? It, it's a funny name. It ain't English. It's hard to read. So it's someone from overseas. Let me have a bash at it. Se Seshiro. Is it? Yeah, Seshiro. Jig Oak. You, maybe? What? It, it can't be. Shishiro Jigoku? But that's Judge Shigoku! Yeah, he could easily take out Gregson. He, if he thought Susano the Susano takedown, he could easily take down Gregson. Gregson can't even fight against a little girl. And then, yeah, then basically Iris, Iris learns about this. Jigoku, what? What do I hear boss music? Dum, 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 dum. Iris just comes out of the shadows. Basically, Sephiroth's theme starts playing and just. And Jigoku's just gone. Shashiru Jigoku! Surely not an English name, you're right. Okay. But that can't be! I know Judge Jigoku, and I saw him the day before yesterday. He's here in London. So I know for a fact that the man hasn't been assassinated. As I said, the Reaper failed. Oh. Grayson missed his chance to kill his mark and return to the British shores. But the Reaper wouldn't tolerate the mistake. So he killed the inspector, personally. The Reaper, of course, being the accused. Barack Van Zeeks. It's an undeniably logical argument. Kazuma, you planned for the trial to go this way all along, didn't you? Hold it! <laughs> Talk to the boot! Pray forgive the disgust of filling my hollow chalice whilst I stand accused of murder. 
How did Fantix even get a hold of him? What, does he have just hollowed bottles and hollowed chalices stashed all around this courtroom? He just whipped one out from underneath the defendant's bench and just poured it and just started sipping? Look, Lord Van Zeeks, the accused has no right to speak on your body in court. You will return to the dock. I made you, Kazuma. I can destroy you. I say nothing of whatever on, on I say nothing of whether or not I'm the Reaper. That's the dash to this cord to the side. But there is one thing I can say unequivocally. The girl is no detective. Eh? What? Nah, that's right. I ain't. I ain't an inspector. Repeating rumors heard around the yard. Reading entries from a notebook of unconfirmed origin. That's not testimony. It's practically a script. No doubt the rest of the trial will go exactly as you clearly planned. Your hatred of me is understandable. In your mind, I'm sure I am the re... I'm sure I'm... I sh uh, in your mind, I'm sure I am the Reaper who sent your father to the gallows all those years ago. But you're in danger of becoming a far more sinister reaper yourself. For you will be crafted into something more, basically. With my refined intellect and your nebo needs depravity, you would be a force of evil and destruction. By attempting to have me condemned with this feeble excuse for a testimony. It's not even good testimony. It's coming from a girl who, what, knows how to read two sentences? What did you say? Mr. Naruto, this is our chance. My lord, the defense requests that the defendant be allowed to speak. He may be privy to important information relating to the testimony just given by the witness. No. Very well, I'll make an exception and grant the request. The defendant may remain in the witness stand for the draw's examination. Then allow me to toast the court's impartiality. Don't raise your glass in my direction, sir. I was addressing your direction, sir. Counsel of the defense, begin the cross-examination immediately. At once, my lord. Okay, let me just look through this. Let me just look through the testimony. Roots. The SS Roots. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just start pressing. From the start. In other words, it shows that Grayson was basically acting as the Reaper. Not you and all. Not you and all. That ain't the only explanation, is it? He could have been investigating the Reaper in secret, and that notebook was said what he found out. If I may, when originally, pre when originally people began referring to me as the Reaper, I didn't object. Yeah, little Fancy just looks so disinterested in his, in his little side portraits. I believe the power to Im intimidate London's criminal classes in compliance with the law to be beneficial. But you carried out your own investigations into the true identity of the Reaper, didn't you? Yes, and those investigations proved conclusively that Gregson was one arm of the Reaper. One arm? What are you talking about? The Reaper's victims were all extremely shrewd criminals at the top of the game. There's simply no way one person could have taken them on alone. The Reaper is an organization. With you as its head. If I was the Reaper, do you think my Lord Nibody's friend here would have been alive for as long as he is? He wouldn't even be in this courtroom. I would have taken him down right after the, Mc after the McGilded case. I had spies at the yard giving me abreast of Gregson's movements, letting me know when he was elsewhere. So I'd been able to check the most recent entry in this book. I knew the location. You knew it said Bruce? Believing it to be a reference to the Gentleman's Club, I went down the day in question to investigate. Alone. With plenty of one dollar bit with plenty of shillings. I lose change. Ah, so that explains why several of the members of the club claimed to have seen you there. But of course, the inspector was not there. 
because at the time he was making his way to the steamship dock to the northern coast of France. And as uh, shown by the password found in the victim's metal trunk. Very well then. Back to your testimony about the contents of the notebook. Fine. Is something wrong, Mr. Naruto? You seem a little shocked by something a moment ago. Oh, uh, no. It's it's all right. Uh, I'm overthinking this, aren't I? Hold it! Names of victims, dates, places, and stuff. What in particular? Well, besides the victims' names, this other name kept cropping up. What other name was that? It's the one I told you yesterday. The same name written over and over again. Her ladyship. You mean Asa Shin? Yeah, that's the one. She's a friend of yours, Simon, ain't she? Were you even listening yesterday? Asa Shin. The assassin with the pun name? What? Like a killer, you mean? Gregson was the tactician. The one who came up with the plan of attack. He investigated the marks thoroughly, finding out when they would be vulnerable and who to use to get at them. But the person actually executed his plans was someone else, you're saying. If that's true, then the Reaper does indeed start to sound like an organized group of vigilantes. Ah, then perhaps that might on the password document. Permission for the uh, applicant and one additional person to travel. Could that additional person have been... Clearly the assassin who is meant to take Shijiro Jigoku's life. Gina, can you confirm that? Against the final entry listed Gruz and Shishiro Jigoku. What name was written? Oh, well, that's the only entry that didn't have a name next to it, as it happens. What? It, it just added like a question mark or something there, I think. In other words, Gregson himself didn't know the identity of the assassin in that case. But Gregson was the one making the plans, was he not? Oh, how infuriating. A nameless assassin. Hold it! And you're saying that the mark listed was Shishiro Jigoku? That's what it said. Funny name, if you ask me. And I thought your name was odd. So pleased that I've lost my crown there. Mr. Jigoku is the presiding judge of Japan's Supreme Court of Judicature. I remember that man. He owes me money. He came to our country as a visiting student 16 years ago. Studying international... Oh, sorry. Studying international law and diplomacy under your tutelage, Lord Strongheart. That barbed, young, barbed, bearded young fellow was a very able man, I must say. So Lord Strongheart was Judge Jigoku's mentor. If I'm not mistaken, he returned to Japan 10 years ago now. 10 years ago, after that fateful case... Precisely. In the aftermath of the professor case, his reparation was organized immediately. It's a mystery why such a man would be listed in the inspector's notebook. I didn't think it was plausible, but the moody I just got even was now. Maybe I'll just keep talking. Hold it! Why do you mean a criminal? Judge Goku is no criminal. Well, don't ask me. I know nothing about it. Oh, do you remember that father told us that Judge Goku did once appear in court here in Britain? It was related to the professor case, I'm sure. Yes, of course. You're right. Shichiro was trying to make a Genshin's guilt, so he took to the stand to testify. But he got a little carried away and, um, actually managed to break the witness stand. He also said some contemptuous words about the British Empire, for which he was charged. It was a pitiful situation, yes. I'd forgotten all about it, but I prosecuted that trial too as it happened. You did? It was considered to be an adju adjunct to the professor proceedings, you see. But he was acquitted after being told to make reparations for the damage caused to the stand. And there you have it. Have what? Surely the accused hasn't forgotten his own rule. That there's no saving anyone who faces the Reaper in court, guilty or innocent alike. 
What? No! Uh, are you suggesting that the reason Judge Goku was targeted for assassination was because he broke a witness stand? The man was sent back to Japan immediately after that trial. The Reaper had no time to do his work. But then, ten years later, the Mark returns to Britain once more. Perhaps now you start to see just how vindictive the Reaper is over a witness stand that was repaid for and replaced. Come on, that's absurd. To take someone's life for that? Isn't that whole, isn't the whole premise of the Reaper's absurd killing those who have been found innocent? Clearly the rules by which the man operates are beyond a sane person's comprehension. But... Right, I've had just about enough of this. Gina. All this nonsense about the boss plan to kill people. It's cobblers. Come on, Odo. Yes. Why ain't you saying nothing? Why? Why ain't you yelling out objection or something? What? You've got to find a flaw. You, you do usually. Someone's lying. No question. You've got to find out who. Please. For the boss. That, that outburst was an insult to the court in your own testimony. I might have known that a common big pocket from the back slums could make a detective. When this trial is over, you will forfeit your warrant guard, Miss Lestrade. Is that clear? Uh, uh. I've had with a lot of ya. It's lies every beat place you look in this world in it. Well, I had enough. And then, and then Gina pulls out the bazooka, pulls out her, pulls out basically that mist gun, that smoke grenade launcher, and then just starts launching rounds into the court. Day of retribution, please. Gina. So have I. After the, that little speech of Gina's, I made up my mind. To do what, Mr. Naruto? There was one point in this cross-examination when something that was just said just didn't sit right with me. One statement that seemed odd. Oh, do, do you mean... I'm not gonna let Genus plead for help. Fall on death ears. Hold it! I want to... I want to thank you, Gina. Help me find my resolve. Eh? The name of the case, Gina. The name of the case is coming to effect. What do you mean? Amongst everything we've heard during this cross-examination, there's one thing that defies explanation. One inconsistency. What? An inconsistency? Really, Odo? I don't quite know what it means yet, but... Yes, there's an, incon there's an inconsistency in something that was said by... By you, Kazuma Asogi. Me? Is this some attempt at filibustering filibuster council? Because I will outlast you all. Uh, remember that soul spiel I went on? Well, that was nothing. I will take you all down the filibuster. Prosecutor Asogi has given no testimony. What are you suggesting I said that was inconsistent? You let something slip that you shouldn't have. When I present the real, when I present the real piece of evidence, I, I imagine you'll realize what you've done. Very well then, counsel, go ahead. What evidence reveals this alleged inconsistency in something Prosecutor Sogi said? Okay, and now I'm having, and now I'm basically having issues. I'm not remembering. Da, da. Do, oh, oh yes, yes. Have you seen this huge gash across the side of the trunk here? It's gone right through the leather and into the metal behind. Gosh, for a metal chest like this to have been so badly damaged, whatever made that gash must have been struck in the side, in the, side of the trunk with considerable force. I wonder how it happened. Look at this dark stain here. Do you think... Yes, I'm afraid so. I think it's blood. Ugh, I knew you were going to say that. So that presumably means that this plate... That this was present at the scene when Inspector Grayson was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. To think Gina's been carrying this around with her. 
If you didn't know any better, I suppose it does look like a grease stain from all the fish and chips. Let's have a, I know, look inside. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Take that! This is a truck that belonged to Inspector Gregson. A metal construction, is it? It's certainly very heavy. What's this? A blood stain and a relatively fresh one, too. What? You you mean that ain't grease all the boss's fish and chips? Fresh blood on the inspector's truck. That suggests that the victim was traveling with, a lu with, luggage, with that luggage where he was killed. That certainly can't be. There was no mention of a trunk in Scotland Yard's report. Yes, there's a reason for that. Immediately after the inspector's body was discovered, one of the street peddlers made off with that trunk, hoping to sell it. But I found it. Me with the no, with me with n me nose for trouble. Hmm. Which means that nobody should have known anything about the trunk, unless, of course, we're talking about somebody who has pres who was present when the victim was killed. And yet, during the cross-examination of the witness just now, you said this, Kazuma. Because at the time, he was making his way to the steamship docked in the northern coast of France, as shown by the password found in the victim's metal trunk. So the question is, how do you, how do you know about the inspector's trunk? We know the man went on a trip to France. Where else would he have put his luck passport? <laughs> But you knew it was a metal trunk. Answer me honestly, Kazuma. On the 31st of October, where exactly were you? At the port of Dunkirk, on board the SS Groose. Is that the answer you're looking for, Rinosuke? Kazuma, wh what did you? I hadn't considered the possibility before, but if Kazuma was there on the ship then, it can only have been for one purpose. Oh no, Mr. Rudo. Surely, surely you don't think... Of course it had to be you! You tried to frame me! You were like, oh, let me continue the work of my father, my depraved father. Let me kill a man and then blame it on Van Zeeks. Let's ruin more lives, shall we? Ha 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 ha! Come on, Rinosuke. You know the rules. Now, the only thing that really talks in the courtroom is hard evidence. As I understand it, Inspector Gregson always took that case with him when he traveled. So as it stands, you prove nothing. Kazuma, are you challenging me to prove it beyond all reasonable doubt? That you were there that day in the same place as the inspector? He, he was there with Gregson? Of course he did it. There's a clue that you overlooked, a secret that the trunk can tell us. I can't be sure at this point. I'll need to verify it. But I have a nasty feeling that I'm going to be right. The, the accusation being made is deeply disturbing, but nevertheless, we must test it. Uh, the defense will tell them by the court where on the trunk, where in the trunk this alleged clue is to be found. Where is the evidence that ties Rossi or Soka to Inspector Gregson? Just want to make sure. Have you seen this huge cash cut inside the trunk? Yes. We, yeah, we read this far already. I just wanted to verify. I just wanted to verify. Yes, the gash must have struck the side. Was the zero force? How it happened? Got it. This is your proof. Why do you say that, Professor Sogi? Personally, I think that trying the defense counsel to the inspector's trunk is, and tossing in the sea would be more helpful. What? At least that way, London's courtrooms will be safe from his destructive accusations. I believe that was a rather long-winded way of telling you that you're wrong, Mr. Naruto. Very well. Then let's see you sink or swim under the way of the penalty, Council. Ah! Mr. Naruto, you can't let be drowned just yet. I, I was hoping never to let that happen, fun funnily enough. I know it's a gash!
Okay, let's see if we can open it then. Come on. Okay. Okay, I, I just... I know it's a gash. I know that basically it's representing that Kazuma basically slashed out with Karuma. But basically... But no, no, that's not good enough. That's not good enough in this courtroom. I'm seriously trying this again. Got it. Okay, I'm I'm putting this on. I'm putting this on. Sorry, Bode. Really? Yeah, let's just get through that. Please, tell me, game. What am I missing? Watch out, it's like some corner. You know, I'm looking at the freaking sword, the, the katana slash that's right in the side. That's the part the game wanted! What? What? Uh, eh, uh, okay, let me just go back. There's a small piece of metal lodged in the wall of the trunk here, like a tip of like. I, I thought that was a piece of the trunk! I thought that was a get that's in the trunk side! Yet the giant blade gash! No, that's nothing! That's apparently worth Jack Diddley Squaw in this courtroom. Frankly, you should have counted both the giant gash and the blade mark as one thing. And the piece of the blade is one thing. And a blade. Kazuma, slung around your waist as ever today, is the Essene Blade Karuma. Of course it is. Won't you draw it here in this courtroom for all to see? Exercise caution, my lord friend. That man is the son of London's most notorious killer. He'll kill us all with that katana. Bailiff, you watch for us. Watch for us. You are so good like a hawk. That won't be necessary. Oh no! The tip is broken. If the fragment of the metal from the trunk fits together with the end of the sword, the question of who was there with Inspector Gregson will be answered. <coughs> Agree, Kazuma Sogi? It's really done, Rinosuke. That's a point to you, and well deserved. Do you mean to tell the court, Prosecutor Sogi? Yes, on the 31st of October, I accompany Inspector Gregson to Dunkirk. In order to carry out a mission. So the additional pass and person authorized us tra to travel. Was me. And the mission was the assassination of the mark. What? What? You mean you're the killer whose name was omitted from this notebook? You were following the Reaper's orders to dispatch Judge Jigoku? Let me make one thing perfectly clear. I have killed no one. Explain. I accepted the assassination mission, yes. And I got me Gregson to Gunkirk. But I never had any intention of carrying out the plan. You mean you were never gonna do it? We can believe Kazuma-sama, I'm sure. After all, Judge Goku arrived safely in London the following day. Hmm. On the 31st, I boarded a train from London with Inspector Gregson. We traveled to Dover, from where we crossed the channel to Dunkirk. Then we boarded the SS crews and made for the cabin deck, as indicated in the plan. You went to Judge Goku's cabin? Exactly. He wasn't there, though. We decided to wait, but... 
but you already told us you had no intention of going through with it anyways. I didn't come to the Great Britain to take anyone's life. So I left Gregson and disembarked the ship. I spent that night at a boarding house in town and returned to England the following morning. A boarding house? In Dunkirk? My signature will be in the register book. It would be simple enough to verify. Then, what became of Jigoku? Gregson was no assassin, so the mark was spared. I'm sure it was easy enough to imagine what happened after that. Gregson returned to England as well, having failed to complete the mission. He met with the Reaper in that room on Fresno Street to report the failure. Causing the infuriated mastermind to pull the trigger. And end his wretched agent's life. That's the real truth behind Inspector Gregson's murder. Objection. But if you did nothing as you claim, how did the tip of your sword come to be lodged in the inspector's trunk? I believe the fifth. I don't need an I don't need to answer that. The victim was killed by a gunshot, a small fragment of a Japanese blade irrelevant to the case. And accordingly, I chose to exercise my right to silence on that matter. Be that as it may, the court will sequester the sword as evidence. As you wish, my lord. The great sword Kazuma has been entered into the court record. Let's examine Kazuma. Kaz Karuma, the great blade. It's such a thing of beauty. I want to gaze at it for hours. The tip of the great sword. Broken. It's such a shame. It's been so meticulously cared for over the years. I can almost hear Karuma's sobs. Karuma must Kazuma must have taken a swing for that to happen. We must take a mean action now to verify whether Shishiru Jigoku remains unharmed. What? W remains unharmed? I agree, that should be our first priority. It's recently come to my attention that he hasn't been seen since yesterday. He How do you... When a foreign dignitary is invited to, Great Brit invited to Great Britain and goes missing for 24 hours, it's only natural that the question of his safety should arise. You don't mean to say that you think Judge Shigoku may have been killed? The Reaper has more than one assassin at his disposal, and he has the power and influence to give orders from the inside of a prison cell. Yes, Albert was the was the uh, was another assassin. Okay, I am here. A, I am here. A potato clock that is said to explode at five o'clock. Isn't that right, Lord Van Zeeks? If I were truly the Reaper, I'd been able to tell you. Order, order the court, order. We will take an emergency recess for 30 minutes. Now, guests of the symposium have been, have been taught, told to maintain regular contact with the organizer's office. If the man can't be located within half an hour, we will have to assume the worst. Oh no, not Judge Shigoku. No one would want to kill a harmless Japanese man who'd only just arrived in the country. Except that is, for the Reaper, wanting to finish out a mark that slipped through the net 10 years ago. I would have to agree. Mr. Naruto, for the defense's sake, my, my lord, I sincerely hope we are successful. If we are unable to confirm Mr. Jigoku's healthy existence in the next 30 minutes, you will face grave difficulties. Ah! Court is adjourned for 30 minutes. Kazuma-sama, the Reaper's assassin. I feel as though I'm in a nightmare. I can hardly believe it either. But on, I, but on the other hand, Kazuma isn't that in the habit of making up stories. I have such a terrible sense of foreboding. If something awful has happened to Judge Shigoku... 
then I feel as though things will only spiral further and further out of control. I felt it at from, I felt it from the moment I stepped into the courthouse this morning. That strange sensation that we were careening towards a foregone conclusion. Well, in the worst case, we might only have 30 minutes left. Unfortunately, though, I don't think there's anything we can do but wait now. We're out of options. Actually, there may be one last hand we can play. Or rather, one last ear. Uh, of course. The little Mr. Sholmes doll that Iris gave us. If for some reason you completely run out of options in the draw today, then just pull this little hair on his ears and as hard as you possibly can. Perhaps now is the time. Who? What should I do? Pull Hurley's ear, Hurley's ears, or not? Pull. Here, here goes. Then I'm gonna do it. Good luck, Mr. Naruto. No looking back. Ah, uh, heave! Boom! What the heck has happened, <laughs> Mr. Naruto? Get out of there! We don't know. Some what happened, Lord Char? Someone just blew a big man. <laughs> Get out! They may have other explosives here. And then I was, hello, we saved the day. <laughs> yeah. Ow! Oh! That scream sounded like Mr. Sholmes. M Mr. Sholmes, where are you? Help me, Mr. Naruto. Iris has taken my soul in my sleep and put it in the bunny plush. Help! Here, my dear fellows, here. Iris stole my soul and implanted it in this doll. Please, to kill me now. This is no existence. It, it's the felt doll talking. Pull the ears again, Mr. Naruto, as hard as you can! Alright then, I'll pull it all, all my strength into it. Heave! Ow! Oh! Please, my dear fellows, you need not pull my ear off! Mr. Sholmes, wh where are you? Well, it's in the next episode. Anyways, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. Without, see you next time. Bye!